So um, already you'll start to see patterns, things like launch and learning and then evolve on uh, that we just saw there. Um, Definitely uh, this year we're going to be dealing with a lot of taking experience design beyond the browser. Uh, and I think another pattern you're going to start to see emerge this year at MX is um, the Emerging Practices Service Design. Uh, Johan from, uh, or, uh, from the uh, European-based design firm uh, Mark Making Ways will be touching on just this subject of service design. Um, occasionally you come up against a project that forces you to broaden and rethink your approach from the one you set off with. He's going to tell us about a story about such a project and how do you go about identifying those moments and what do you do with them. Go ahead. There you go. Great. So um, let's see. There we go. Yeah, great to be here because um, this is what it looks like back home right now. A um, little touch of spring didn't hurt. Um, so this is not a title, it's more of a quote that really frustrates me because it, it sort of reflects that we're still constrained by our publishing systems and that's sort of what uh, uh, keeps us from not you know, creating the experience we want to do. So in Making Waves, we set out to try to uh, get beyond that constraint and uh, we look to service design for that. And um, the reason why I never heard about service design, of course, no, um, not service design, making waves is that uh, we primarily operate in the Scandinavian market, uh, but we're a, a digital consultancy, about 200 people, and like Adaptive Path, we uh, celebrate 10 years this spring. Um, and I'm not going to go that much into service design because I understand that tomorrow someone will talk about uh, the differences and similarities between service design and uh, user experience. Uh, I just want to mention this book, which you really should pick up, which is a really great introductory book to service design. Um, but the project I want to highlight uh, is uh, one of our many clients in the travel industry. And um, this is a process that started five years ago. And it steered us into the path of service design. And as much as I would love to talk about the success of the product, I'm only going to focus on the challenges uh, that led us there. So um, the idea was this. As a tourist, you're looking for a destination. And when you're looking for a destination, it's usually something really specific, like you want to see a painting, or you want to go on that cruise you heard about, or uh, you, know, you want to go pet that polar bear, which, by the way, you really shouldn't. Um, so, but then we put uh, the service Visit Norway into the equation. And, uh, and why is that? Well, the, the whole idea is that we rather have you coming to visit Norway rather than to the destination, and that's, you know, Norway is such a small market that, and it's a once in a lifetime experience to go there, so we really need you to you know, go like this and see all the other destinations. So that would be the model. And, and the reason why um, you know, we want to do this, this is the official uh, travel guide you know, backed by the Ministry of Travel and Industry and all that. So on paper, great idea, right? Um, well, for us who are supposed to build these products, a lot of challenges uh, show up when you try to mold this into a product. And uh, just for context, this is Norway. Um, I mean, there's a lot of uh, Europe going on over there, but um, <laughs> they're not part of the story today. So um, if you're one of these popular destinations, people come all by themselves. I mean, if you have Northern Lights or Midnight Sun or you know, awesome fjords or renowned opera houses, you're fine. But the whole model of this was that uh, the lesser known destination was supposed to piggyback on this. So then you have these popular destinations who need to compete for their own keywords and traffic, which uh, is, you know, why would that be their responsibility? It's sort of like when your mom tells you when you're going out to bring along your little brother. Great. Um, <laughs> so that's the first problem we enc uh, encounter that if, if we don't uh, provide significant value to the partners, we're um, threatened by um, having a service that doesn't feature the most popular destinations. And for the user, that means, you know, sort of a Norway that would look like this, like taking a shotgun to the map and you're, you know, that's what you're left with. And that's not a service as a user you would trust. Uh, you wouldn't explore that further uh, if they don't uh, provide stellar content on uh, what you expect. And secondly, I mean, what do you expect from a travel service in the first place? You know. Um, one of the things would be uh, an expert uh, guide. Uh, the other would be more like the validation of, of why you should do it, the mechanics of TripAdvisor. And of course, the ideal would be to actually make the inspiration into actual booked plants. 
The only problem is, because of the politics of this site, uh, all the participants should have the same uh, ranging in there, so you can't really put one destination over the other, so you know, that, there goes that option. And uh, five years ago, we didn't even have Facebook in Norway, let alone any uh, unified system to, to do recommendations, so we didn't have that. And, uh, well, national booking system, well, it's coming this spring, but five years ago, forget about it. So, <clears throat> you know, no recommendation, no validation, no execution. So, <laughs> there's, um, so, th so the UX designer in this situation is sort of left with this situation. You have a clear idea what the service should be, but this is what you have to work with. So, um, I'm, I'm not going to propose that we can easily uh, solve all this complexity today, uh, but we can definitely change a little bit how we deal with it. And um, five years ago, I would say this would be more the situation or how we would work with it. It would be sort of like product design responding to a situation where you do your research, you plan and design, and you end up with a product, uh, and hopefully a good product. And, and all these problems that you, know, you uh, encounter like this, you sort of have your way to design around them to create the illusion of a good user experience. Uh, but you risk having you know, this sort of experience, which feels like you're in control of it, but you're not really. So this is why we started looking for other ways to work with user experience, not in the product, but on a different level. And um, one of the obvious way, places to look was service design. And if we now skip uh, five years ahead, uh, we work with different models for, to work with this. And um, one, of these, um, one of the things we use the most is um, service blueprinting. I'm sure some of you guys have, have worked with this. And if you go into uh, servicedesigntools.org, there's a bunch of resources to look at. Uh, but this is typically where we would start a project today and, and not in product specification. Um, and to just show you a, a sort of oversimplified uh, model of our framework today, uh, it would be more like this, that we would start out with Visit Norway, a project like that. We would start out by defining the user journey regardless of the product we're supposed to build and regardless of the touch points. It would be what, what is the user ex actually expecting uh, from uh, when traveling. Um, and would start out with the most basic steps, like you know, before traveling, during travel, after travel, and then do more granulated versions of it. And then we would map uh, the user needs to it. What are you actually uh, looking at here? What do you, what would you, when do you see confirmation? You know, what are your needs along those sequential steps? And then, um, then you're working with the business opportunities in all these steps, and of course, the, the processes that needs to be there to support these. Um, and of course, working with a model like this gives you a fairly healthy dynamic because the user, exp uh, user experience designer would you know, work this way, and then you have the technologist guys and, uh, and the business developer working this way. And, and um, this might look like a whole different activity than we probably should be working on. I mean, weren't we supposed to build websites? But uh, we find this to be the most important context to actually define the, these products, which is you know, the touch points that are the alignments between in here. And um, so we, uh, we still build the websites sort of in the same place, the same way, but uh, what's really different is that we, we use this axis a lot more to define you know, our products. And, and you know, this is where we find the alignment between the user needs and the business goals. And it also helps us uh, work with the other channels that we're building, because uh, while we used to build only websites, now you know, iPad apps and iPhone apps and print is always part of the projects. It's not just the websites anymore. So, this is sort of where we're at right now, but we would love to discuss more, you know, what, what the next step is, because this is, you know, what uh, what's, uh, all our project is about now. It's not just a product anymore, it's the multiple touch points, and it's the signing for over time. Um, and you should really come visit Norway, it's a fun little country. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you.